Welcome to Holly's Pandorium, featuring your host, psychic medium, Holly Jordan. Hello, everybody. This is Holly from Holly's Pandorium. I'm so glad we're back. I have with me today a very interesting lady who you might not imagine she does what she does. And so I'm I'm going to introduce her and let her explain. And she's got some stories that I have not heard. So we're going to hear all this together. Please welcome Signe of Ghostoria Paranormal Investigations. Hello, Signe. How are you? Good. How are you? Really good. Really good. It's beautiful out today. I'm in Camas, Washington, and it's 65 degrees right now, which is perfect. I love that. Yeah, Astoria <laughs> is a little overcast, but it's going to be a beautiful day, I think. So please, please, for the listeners and viewers, tell me about Astoria. For people that are not from our Pacific Northwest beautiful area, what is Astoria? Astoria is the oldest settlement west of the Rockies. Uh, it's a port town. Uh Port Town. We are on the yeah. northwest corner of Oregon. And when okay. you're standing in Oregon, you can look across a five mile river and see Washington. That's so cool. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And after visiting Astoria, I mean, people think of the end of the Oregon Trail in Oregon City as being the oldest settlement, but it is not. It's actually Astoria. And for Correct. those of you that would like to leave comments about that, please go right ahead. I know I'm going to have some people discussing that. And that's quite all right. Astoria is absolutely enchanting. It's It's got a long history. And, you know, it's definitely one of those places that seems like time stopped. There's a lot of older classic looking buildings that are just lovely. I, I love older architecture. It's so so wonderful to me. Um, so tell me, you've been in Astoria how long now? 31 years. Yeah. So you've been there a bit. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. And you actually have a local business with your husband. You were discussing with me a little bit before the show. What is that? Yes. My husband and I own Astoria Tattoo Company. We've been in business over 10 years. He's the tattoo artist, and I was the office manager, if you will. Right. Uh, about a year ago, I broke out and opened my own business as a permanent makeup artist. It's called Pretty in Ink, but we are in the same building. Nice. That's wonderful. That sounds like a great, a great fun, actually, being artistic okay. that way. Yeah, it still scares the daylights out of me to think of getting permanent eyeliner, but after talking with you, I might think about it. Just so you know, I'm thinking about it. Come on in, I'll take care of you. <laughs> so we're here primarily to talk about the paranormal. So I would love to hear, you talked a little bit about experiences, plural. And I would love for you to share your perspective on how you noticed and didn't spend a whole lot of interest in the paranormal. And then suddenly you did. Tell me what your paranormal experiences were. And then tell me what happened. What changed for you? Well, as a kid, I had heard some stories. I had heard my mother speaking, saying that she stayed the night at a lady's home and that um, she had woke up in the middle of the night and had heard a party going on. And when she got up to look, there was indeed a party, but not with live people. And oh. now that I'm in this field, I think what she was seeing was residual. Okay. Because nobody interacted with her. She just watched them as they were clinking glasses. Music was playing. She heard the whole thing as if she wow. was right there. And as a kid, you know, I just, oh, whatever. And went on playing with Barbies or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really think anything about it. And in my 20s, early 20s, we had a family friend um, pass away at our home and strange things began to happen. But again, I'm a 20 year old kid. I'm not paying attention. Right. Uh, even when they're telling me stories, it, it, it doesn't affect me until it affects me. Right. And I was actually staying the night at a family member's home 
and I was on the couch laying on my back just ready to fall asleep and I felt pressure right here like from behind like someone she's touching the top of her shoulders okay yeah so yeah I'm sorry uh so they were touching the top of my shoulders like they were behind me okay and then I felt the pressure going down my chest okay and it stopped and my breasts oh um and was touching me oh boy and at that point i freaked out and i'm yeah screaming but rightfully so out. Ooh. And I'm yelling for my sister and I, I don't know that nothing's coming out but i'm yelling for my sister Whoa. and it eventually stops and when i went to get her she said she never heard a thing from me and she was only maybe 30 feet away so wow although i thought i was screaming nothing was coming out and, and how old were you then? 22. Okay. And I had, wasn't into the paranormal or anything then. Right. Uh, and it did freak me out, but, you know, I went on with life and didn't give it another thought. Um, but other things had happened to other family members and, again, wasn't affecting me. So I, I wasn't into the paranormal, so I didn't, you know, delve into it. Right. Um. And then later when my mother passed away, a few things happened to my brother. Mm -hmm. She came to see him. Okay. And then he told me that it's happened to him many times. And it's something that he didn't talk about. And my family never really talked about because I found out my other sisters have the gift also of hearing and seeing them. Wow. And I just found it out little at a, a little bit at a time. Right. He just wants to admit they have it or use their gifts. Interesting. So right. I want to go back for just a second to this original story of your mom watching a party going on. Yeah. So she was staying at a friend's house when this happened. How old was she? Mid forties, I would think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's not the only story she's told me over the year. So did anyone else see what she saw or hear what she heard? Uh, I don't think so at the time, but, you know, I was a young kid when she was telling okay. the story. And over right. the years, I never thought to ask her to explain anymore. Okay. So when you say listening and hearing, so is the family stories that you're referring to, are these incidences where you think people are seeing apparitions or ghosts or residual oh. energy, or is it different things? Uh, no, spirits. Um, okay. They... Uh, that story is full of Victorians. Yes. They call it Little San Francisco because of the hills and the Victorians. My sister right. owned one. Okay. And on the second floor, there was a giant landing. Mm -hmm. And she said every morning, a, a male spirit would meet her at the top of the stairs and she could see him. And he wow. would walk her to the kitchen every morning that she lived in that home. Oh, my goodness. And again, I didn't find that out till after she moved away. Wow. <laughs> But, it, you know, even if she had told me at the time, I wasn't into the paranormal, so I wouldn't have, you know, been right. there investigating. Right. So exactly. It was normal for her. Right. So in growing up hearing all these different stories, and that's a lot. I mean, you're you're yeah. relaying quite a, quite a basket full of stories from different members of your family in different times. And so it's not all. What I love about this, Signe, is... It's not all just in one place. It's different locations right. and different times, basically, in your life that you've heard these things. Yes. So clearly your family is at least receptive to sharing the stories, which is amazing that they're willing to do that all, all at one time that they're doing this. And that's great. But I'm curious, what happened to you to make you want to do something about all these things that you've heard? Clearly, they stacked up in your mind at some point, and you kind of went, wow. Because you just made the comment about they all seem to have these gifts, and nobody's willing to do things with it. What made you decide to, to do something about what you know? Well, probably about 20 years ago, um, I started getting interested, you know, watching Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures. Mm -hmm. And right. I went on my first ghost hunting vacation through Oregon. Okay. And nothing really happened but it was a fun vacation for the family okay and um I, I still had it in the back of my mind thinking you know that's kind of cool i would like to see what could happen one day and it was probably another 
10 or 15 years that went by before I really said, you know what, I'm interested in this. I do have some knowing, if you will, <laughs> sure. of myself. And I thought, I wonder if I got into a group, if I did these investigations, that I could have those experiences okay. on, at higher locations. So I found a, a group totally by accident out of uh, Seaside, mm -hmm. and I jumped the chance to join them. And it uh, wasn't a good fit. Okay. Uh, they did not have the same mindset as I did. I, I okay. Felt. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to start my own. And I started getting some gear and I was looking for people to join. And it was just at that point where someone says, hey, there's another group that just started. And they told me about Ghostoria. And I went, are you kidding me? Dang it. I go, there's another group and they have a better name than I do. I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> I have to see what these people are about. So I took one of their tours and started talking with Natalie, which is now my partner in Ghostoria, and her original co-investigator. Mm -hmm. And I liked what they were doing. I liked that they were looking for proof of the afterlife. They mm -hmm. weren't looking for notoriety or to be on TV or whatnot. They wanted proof. Right. And that's what I want. I yeah. wanted to show people they exist. It's not in my head. It's not right. in your head. Right. Ghosts are. And I then, love that. Uh, yeah. And I've had a few experiences through Ghostoria. And if I wasn't with Ghostoria, I don't know that I would have had them. Right. And so right. I'm grateful for that, for sure. And then what happened? Well... I, I was so Natalie and I it was Natalie myself and Renier her original partner mm -hmm. and I still had my own group so I was just kind of hanging out with them then Renier left and Natalie's like you know what we both are single in our own paranormal groups let's just join together so we joined together and started doing everything we could to investigate and we were investigating one location that we were giving tours at six seven nights a week we were down there oh, wow. for hours at a time right and we were just enthralled by everything we were getting all the communications um there was one time i did get touched uh, at that location and that was the only physical activity for me but it just uh I guess, lit a fire under me to keep doing more, that I wanted more of those experiences, not necessarily okay. much, but right. direct communication. And so, you know, four years later, Nat and I are doing Daniel Ghost Conference. We're doing uh, benefit investigations. We're doing private investigations. That original location where we met, we left just because it was a little bit of burnout because we were there all the time. Sure. Um, so we've just moved on to other things, which brings us to, let's say we're out in public and someone will say, hey, what do you do for a living or what do you do for fun? And then, you know, for a split second, you don't know if you should say it. Right. And then you say what you do and they're like, oh, my house is haunted. Why don't you come over? So yeah. all these little things lead to us going to other places and yes. open people's minds to the possibility. Right. Of spirits existing. Right. So as far as I know, you and Nat are like the only official ghost team in Astoria at this time. Is that correct? Or am I, is that not no, correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's okay. Correct. Which yeah. shocks me when we had our paranormal picnic and I heard that I thought, what? <laughs> I just assumed <laughs> Astoria would be loaded. It just blows me away because, because of what Astoria is because oh, of sure. just location wise being a port city, first of all, just like Portland yes. and Seattle and whatnot. And then because of the lineage, the history there is phenomenal. There's so many things that went on in Astoria for many generations. And 
anywhere people have lived a long time, you know there has to be some residual energy hanging out. There just has to be. Well, this is a small town. And although we're the only official group here, it doesn't mean lack of interest. Right. So when we originally started, Matt um, and Renier, they originated the formal tours under Gully's Butcher Shop. Okay. And it's notoriously haunted and was made famous, if you will, by being on Ghost Adventures. Okay. So Natalie and her previous investigators started those tours. And so mm -hmm. that's how people know Ghost Story is from that. Gotcha. So we are constantly getting asked, when are you going to do another public in investigation? We would love okay. to attend. We want to see this. We want to do this. Right. People just don't know how, or they don't want to, you know, invest the time or the money and gear. You know, most right. people don't want to do this because sitting in a basement for four hours in the dark talking to yourself and nothing happening is not for everyone. You know, Correct. Not everybody has the, Correct. the luxury of time to do those things. Ghost and, investigations can definitely be more of a spectator sport. It's not something everyone wants to participate. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's enough that people have groups like us that will do public investigations and they can come check it out and be involved and witness, possibly witness activity. Right. So that's probably, and you know, this is a small town, like I said. So I can't imagine there's ever going to be more than us. But if there is, great. Bring it on. Let's have everybody be investigators. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so have you had, since you've been doing this for a few years, have you had some aha moments with people's homes and businesses that you've investigated where they've gone, wow, that they, you know, you've got some evidence to share with them and they're, and they're surprised or they scared, you know, what are the reactions you're getting from people? I think once they, you know, call us and say, Hey, we'd like actual proof or documentation of this. They've already decided their place is haunted or they've okay. come to the realization and acceptance that their place is haunted. Right. So anything we give them is just icing on the cake. It's, I don't think we've had anybody shocked. Okay. Uh, except for maybe when we get spirit box activity and they can hear mm -hmm. someone speaking, right. I think that kind of takes them aback. Like, oh wow, right? Right. Um, it's different to see, you know, maybe a cat ball light up or a rim pod go off because you know maybe right. that's something else. But right. <laughs> how are you gonna say that that voice that came through is not a spirit voice? Because you know it's not the radio. You can tell right. the difference on a spirit box between a radio and a voice that's coming through, right? Very true. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think that's probably the only time it's really the eyes get a little bit big kind of moment. Well, but I think what I appreciate about what you're saying, Signe, the most is that it's not for you and Nat. It's not about getting on television because I'm noticing I've been in the paranormal a very, very long time myself. Right. And so for me, um, I appreciate this little bit of a slice between the paranormal investigators where people are either interested in re recognition and accolades or they're interested in straight evidence. And so it's not about I did or did not prove that there's a ghost. It's about um, I've settled the matter, I have evidence, or I've settled the matter, there is evidence that there isn't something here. Right. And so that to me makes a lot more sense and it gives credibility to what we do. I, I've found, especially in the last three years uh, up here in my area, that the people that are really excited about the internet, that are really excited about getting acknowledged or getting their 15 minutes of fame tend to lose sight of the goal. And unfortunately that causes problems because people tend to not remain objective. They don't necessarily have the same heart for the investigations that I feel like would be better. I think it's better when you go for the scientific end 
and go to prove or disprove because that lends some credibility. We're still in the fringe of science. We're still getting criticized for the gear that we use. We're still getting, you know, a lot of eyebrows raised of like, really, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of fact-based stuff that, that carries all the way across. We still have a lot of people booing this, that it's, it's not uh, really anything real, that it's all staged. And so, absolutely. yes. And so I, I've been a psychic my entire life and a medium. I have been talking to dead people since I was a child. I have never had the luxury of thinking that they were not real. I don't have that luxury. I deal with them on a daily basis. It's just part of my life. And I've accepted that. But when we have someone like yourself that has clearly a family lineage of openness to it and definitely some gifted lines of communication that are there. They're active clearly. And when you guys need to be aware, you're, you're made aware and that's great. Um, A lot of people as we're growing up, we lose that. We lose that ability to be receptive and open to the paranormal. So I'm, I'm ecstatic for you, Signe, that you've decided to research and continue with this because definitely other people in your family are probably going to be a little more relaxed about talking about it because of what you're doing. And so I appreciate your story very much because I know for a fact that there's almost always at least one story in every family. Somebody saw or heard something somewhere that they couldn't explain. And so I love that you're doing the tours and that, and that you're going the extra mile to be cautious about it and not and not go after the accolades not nothing wrong with with getting a moment of of acknowledgement and getting some praise for doing a good job that's wonderful but as i said i really feel like we need to be cautious because it's not a tv show it's somebody's real life it's somebody's business or somebody's home that they need to be able to occupy comfortably with whatever's going on there and i I think that that's the number one for me. That's number one. Um, Making sure that people can be okay. They can be safe in their homes, safe in their businesses. And if anything, maybe come to some kind of acknowledgement and agreement with whatever other energies are there to live peacefully with each other. You know? Oh, sure. Yeah. I believe that's possible. I believe that's always an option, you know, depending on the rare exception when something is really yucky, then maybe not, but that's very rare. Um, speaking from your own experience, have you, tell me what you've predominantly encountered as spirit wise. Are you finding more pleasant ghosts? Are you finding unhappy ghosts? What What are you discovering when you're interacting with the spirit world? You know, I don't think we've come across anything negative or heavy, um, you know, and I think one of the misconceptions is if you get activity, you're going to know what, what is there. Well, you're not. So I don't know if it's a little girl or a little boy or a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Who knows what we're talking? And we're not having actual conversations with people. You know, right. when we get activity, it's like, if you're here, can you ring the bell? Rings the bell. Right. You know? right. Uh, or light something up. So we right. really never know what we're dealing with. But for myself okay. and for Nat, I don't think we've ever felt anything really heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, except maybe one time it felt a little weird. You know, maybe not so nice, but it was mm-hmm. for a fleeting moment. Right. So I don't think anything's been bad. Good. Where we've been. That's awesome. I love that. So it is nice. It is. It is. So when you go on an investigation and tell me how you guys get started, I mean, who does the research, who's tracking stuff? How are you documenting what you're doing? Tell me how it works. So normally someone will tell us, Hey, did you know, whatever business is haunted or my aunt has a haunted house, whatever, however we find out we'll contact them, but I don't want too much information. Okay. But I will ask a few questions like, what makes you think your place is haunted? What mm-hmm. makes you think you have activity? And they'll give me a little bit, um, but I don't do a lot of research. I just don't want to know before we go there. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, have an idea of what can happen and then it doesn't. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know what's going on here, but it's not a ghost. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then Nat, she doesn't do any research either because she also doesn't want to know till we get there. And then, you know, we have a plethora of items, you know, a lot of things that light up, make noise that we bring. And mostly that's for the visual, for the person there okay. at their location to say, this is what's going to happen. If we make contact, we're going to ask them to light this up or ring this bell or whatnot. And so they have that activity to say, yes, see, my place is haunted or yes, right. something is here. Right. But those, although, although those items are good to have, I don't rely on them for any kind of acknowledgement that something's there. I rely on my audio for the most part, because okay. that's the only thing that I think is truly evidence of the afterlife is your spirit box. 90% of the time, but if you get EVPs and you were there and you know that somebody didn't say hello, but you hear hello on that tape recorder, right? Well, what else can it be? You know, so that is my, my proof is the EVPs. That's what I look for is EVPs or something on video or camera. Mm -hmm. So tell Okay, so explain for people what an EVP is. Uh, electric Electronic voice phenomena, it's spirits speaking in a frequency that you cannot hear, but that certain tape recorders can pick up. Um, and we've gotten so many that it's it's hard to say there isn't proof of the afterlife. And so a I lot think of it's... Yeah, down on that. Go, yes, and what I was just going to say is you know, we know that dogs can hear on different levels and that, you yeah. know, we have whistles for dogs that we don't hear what's coming out of them, but dogs respond to them. And it makes sense to me because these are frequencies. These are sound waves. Right. What's to say, you know, if for people that don't believe in the afterlife, they think when you die, that's it. And there's nothing. Well, what if there is something and what if, it's on a different frequency. And maybe that's why we don't hear ghost voices all the time. Only once right. in a while when we're very quiet and maybe we're able to tune in. And if these devices have the ability to tune in and give right. us an avenue to hear, why not? Absolutely. You know, why not? With exactly. The box putting out white noise for whatever reason, they're able to utilize that. Mm -hmm. And you can hear, you know, sometimes you can't make out what they're saying, but a lot right. of times you really can. And right. it's crazy how they respond. Right. It's times, you know, we go to a lot of locations that absolutely nothing happens. Right. And that probably 80% of the time that's the case. Right. Uh, but we know that going in. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we spend our time to get back to the investigation. We spend our time figuring out what we're going to take, pack our gear. We get to the location, we unpack everything. We set up cameras. We're there for three or four hours. And by the time we pack up to leave, we're like, really? Nothing happened. You mm -hmm. know, but, you know, we kind of expect it. But the great part is I might get home and start going through the audio and video evidence. And then I hear something. Right. And that one hello made the whole night worth it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. because that's it's kind of like it's the aha moment. Oh, there was yeah. something standing next to me talking yeah. to me. Wow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. That's wonderful. Yeah. I had one where I was mocked. And <laughs> I uh we were giving a a uh, public tour. Okay. And I had mentioned putting your phones in airplane mode because for those of you that don't investigate phones and other electronic equipment can affect our gear Correct. and give us false positive. So that's right. Tell everyone, put it in airplane mode. And someone had come up to me and said, uh, I need to put it in airplane mode. Right. And I'm like, yes, airplane mode. And then on the EVP, it says airplane mode. So it was like, it was mocking me. Yes. I, I, I the hair stood up on my body when I listened back to it. I'm like, Oh my God. 
that just happened. <laughs> yeah. It'd be cool to hear it in person, but you know, coming right. on, you know, tape later is is great too. Right. I have a fun story that I like to share. Uh, there's a family that I visit at a cemetery nearby, and there's a generational ghosts you know there's grandparents and grandchildren and so on and so forth and i like to bring my phone out because the grandkids really like to see the phone they like to see the technology it's fascinating to them and they love seeing pictures of other places and just you know anything that's active and alive anything that's you know showing something going on somewhere that they're unfamiliar with by contrast right. One in particular spirit, one grandfather, is terrified of my phone. He hates oh. it. It really freaks him out because it. he thinks it's like the devil because I can see stuff across the world in my hand. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That sure. terrifies him. And so okay. it's not surprising to me that a ghost would say airplane mode because... <laughs> What is airplane mode? They they don't know what that means. Are yeah, you going to exactly. take off? I mean, is yeah. there a plane landing on Main Street? What does that mean? Exactly. You know, you know. And so that's that's one of the fun parts for me is getting to talk and see and hear and know what what are they doing? Right. You know what's what's happening. Ghost perception is not unlike human perception. What would they know and see is all they understand. Right. I had a visit to a cemetery a few months ago and the ghosts were freaked out because a tree had been cut in the cemetery oh. and around the cemetery, there was some new construction and there was some discussion among the ghosts that were residing at the cemetery. They were afraid that the cemetery was going to get moved oh, because wow. there was all this development around them. And then a tree was removed. And so in their thinking, uh oh, we're next. They're going to move the cemetery. They're going to use this land for houses, or they panicked. And so right. when I went there, my spirit guides gave me some suggestions. So I made sure to communicate some things to them to make sure they could relax that this was a very treasured cemetery. They weren't getting moved. And just like in their time, time moves and things develop and where there weren't a lot of things when they started, look what they did in their lifetime. Look how many businesses popped up. Look how many houses were built. Same thing was going on. It was just expanding closer to where they were. Cemeteries were usually very far away from civilization out yes. of respect and out of, you know, peace for the ghosts and the whole thing. I mean, generations ago, that was a, an important factor in a cemetery that it was yes. somewhere beautiful they had a great view. They could see the living, but they would have peace and quiet to eternal rest, as it were. And right. so it didn't even occur to me that that would scare the beans out of a ghost <laughs> to have housing come right up to where they're at. That just freaked them out. And so I think sometimes when we remember that, because you don't know how, like you said, you don't know if you're talking to a kid or an adult you have no idea who you're speaking to. If it's somebody yep. that's from a different era, they don't know why you're there. They don't know what you want. They don't know what the gear is. They know nothing. Exactly. Exactly. They just know you're in their space. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so communicating with them, even if it sounds crazy to an outsider, I'm very open about, hi, I'm Holly. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. Are you guys able to do that? Are you comfortable with communicating with ghosts on that level to explain why you're at a location have you done that yeah we almost i mean i guess always we'll come in and say hello to them introduce ourselves and tell them we're not there to cause any harm good um, we're just there to communicate with them and um usually uh, i think that goes pretty well when we have communication we have had people ask us if we're going to tell them to leave and we like to say that that's, that's not our job to tell them where to be. It's Correct. our job to obtain proof of the afterlife. Right. And if they want to leave, they can't. It, it's not up to us. We like to say, you don't have to stay here, but you can't go with us. We right. don't want to come home with us. Right. And we try 
to remember that, but we do get complacent. And a lot of times, you know, at the end of the night, we're so tired, we just pack our stuff and leave. And I think I've brought stuff home. And, you know, I'm sorry for my husband because he's the one that gets the brunt of it. And he's been uh-huh. trapped for times. Oh, and no. Then, yeah, but I don't, I don't think it's anything malevolent. You know, I, you know, it's not always demonic. Right. Like they do in these shows. I think right. maybe it's a way of communication like, hey, I'm here. Please acknowledge that I'm here. Right. Oh, and it's and, and it's a joke on every uh, investigation that Sydney wants to get scratched. And you know what? I, I probably do. I do. I want to have that. Scratch me. I want that. I want yeah. the proof. Even though I'm a believer, I still want proof. More and more and more proof. Yeah. Just so I can go, hey, look. Look at all this stuff we have. We have EVPs. We have pictures being scratched. We have this. We have that. Why aren't you believing us? You know, these people that don't believe, I just want to make them believe. Yeah. But, again, you know, people are going to believe in what they believe. Right. And as, so, as an old psychic medium with the, with the kindest intent, I will say this. Be very careful what you wish for in the way of scratching. I know. I know. You know, I kind of do I, it in cheek. Um. But it is like, oh, why are you getting scratched? You don't even really believe. I'm the one that believes. So I wonder, I guess in my yeah. mind, I'm wondering why they're choosing him over me. Like, do they know that I already believe and I don't need that proof? It could have nothing to do with that. It be it could be because he's a man. <laughs> well, yeah. I it guess could so. be because he might resemble somebody they knew in life. It right. could be a child that thinks that this looks like their grandfather or their dad. And why aren't you talking to me? Why don't you see oh, me? Yeah, it can be a lot of things. It can yeah. be a lot of things. And so for his sake, he needs a little protection too. But yeah. And what I usually suggest just as a, and I'll just throw this out there for anybody that does ghost investigations, I recommend, you know, doing a blessing on your gear before you start and doing a cleansing on everybody and after. And so by cleansing, I mean literally by using either incense or some kind of sage because, and then actually speaking it and just saying, I take nothing with me that I didn't come with, you know, nothing's coming with me. And, you know, thank you for communicating with us, but you got to stay here. You can't travel with me. And if you have to put a post-it note in your car so that before you drive away, you remember, I have to say this, I have to say this thing. Because you really don't want things coming with you because you really don't know what they've got attached to them. You don't know what energy they have. And and I just say that only because all of us as human beings have encountered energy from a person that's negative. And if you've been around somebody that's really toxic, I call these people psychic vampires. Yeah. And loosely because they can be very draining. Someone that's really depressed can be extremely draining. And so someone in the afterlife that's depressed is even more draining. And so they definitely are looking for energy from some source, whether it's from you or your spouse or a battery in a phone or a flashlight or something else they might be trying to get energy from. It doesn't mean they mean you any harm. It could just be they're just looking to breathe. They're just looking to to get a little energy to move forward because they're tired. Um, It can be any number of reasons, but it's always good to be air on the side of caution because you really, like you said, you don't really know what they're, where they're from and what they're doing and what they want. And again, you disturb their space. So they might want to disturb yours. Yeah. And I don't know if I brought them home or they were here. Who knows? It could be family members. It could be somebody that's been with me for 30 years who knows you know exactly exactly we that is a thing you really need to remember to do is yeah you can't stay here but you can't go home with me and i try to tell people that that they're like their businesses you know i tell them get in the habit and when you leave even if you say it in your head just say please stay here don't go home with me do not come home with me and a lot of people don't even think to do that so it's, it's, it is good practice. Well, and I would just say to anybody listening to us talking right now, 
The thing of it is this. You have spiritual authority in your home. Period. End of sentence. You don't have to be religious. <clears throat> you do not have to go to church. You do not have to be a priest or minister or shaman to speak your peace to an energy. And I, when I say energy, I mean anything that's not in your body. That's right. something outside your body that's in your space, in your home, in your car, whatever. You yeah. have always got the right to own your stuff and say, I don't want anything that's negative. I don't want anything that's not related to me right now in this energy space at all. Everything else needs to go. And it's that it's that simple. It doesn't mean you, you, there's no big ritual. There's no big hoo-ha. It's intent. If you yeah. decide, I don't want this here, it has to go. It doesn't mean it won't try and come back later. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Sure. you can clear the space by owning it. You have spiritual authority in your home. An yeah. energy that's in a place that's been there a long time, well, they have some rights too. Yes. And so I'm very glad to hear, Signe, that you're respectful and kind. And I would yeah. want that. If I died somewhere and was hanging out, you know, I would want someone to be kind and just say, gee, if there's anybody here, you know, this is why we're here and this is what we want. And that right. just makes sense. That just makes sense. Um, there was a movie about this and I'm, uh, I think among us or something like that. I'm trying to remember that it's anyway, it's a famous movie and it's about a woman and her two kids that are in a house and they think it's haunted. And by the end of the movie, you realize she's the ghost and her children are ghosts. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, but I, I yes. Thank you. Talking. Nicole Kidman. Yeah. I don't and remember the Movie, though. I can't think of the name, darn it. Um, if someone remembers the name, please put it in the comments on, on Facebook or YouTube for me yeah. and tell me because I forget the name. But I love that because it is that real. They think yeah. that they're going about their business, doing whatever they're doing, and then surroundings change. Furniture changes, and it's shocking. Yes. They, they're amazed that things are happening different, and they're like, wait a minute, why is that person here? Who is that? It's like an uptick in activity when you renovate, you know, and that's, that's why they're, yeah. they're like, what is going on in my house? Cause it's their right. house. And I've also noticed that if there's stuff going on in houses near yours, in my case, I live in a, in an older area of town and anytime anything happens at my neighbors, I get something down at my house. Oh, wow. Okay. It stirs the energy around and things tend to travel a little bit. They get a little freaked out. We actually have some resident ghosts at our house that are a riot and they're oh. very, they're very sweet and funny. And we actually leave the TV on for them before they leave. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to say, what do you guys want to watch? And then we go through and they'll say, yay. Or, you know, they do something so that I know. Yeah. They look, they love Baywatch. If that gives you a hint, they're guys <laughs> and, and they love old Westerns and stuff like that. Um, All right. And, you know, I left cartoons on for the dog one day, not thinking, and they hid my remote from me, which was hilarious. Wow. And wow. they said, we're not giving it back to you until you promise to not do that to us again. Do not <laughs> leave cartoons on. Yeah. It's just, That's they're funny. very funny and, and I love them dearly. In fact, I told them if we ever move, I want to take you with me because I just love them. They're darling, yeah. you know, um, I've been but one place that it wasn't for an investigation. I happened to be there for another reason mm -hmm. and it's an old craftsman. And she had, she had just that morning figured out that I was with Costoria. So she mm -hmm. said, Oh, just so you know, my house is haunted. And I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. But I was there for another reason. Mm -hmm. So I was doing my, my inspection for her. And she was just mentioning how people have heard things uh, in the house, how they've heard a male speak, how people have seen things move. Right. And, but she didn't want it gone because she didn't feel that it was anything bad. Right. And I had said, you know, you know what I do? Maybe we should come investigate. And they really weren't interested because they didn't want to like aggravate them. They didn't want to upset them because they felt like they had harmony within the house with the resident spirits. Nice. And so I thought that was kind of cool that she didn't want that to happen. You know, um, 
a lot of people would probably jump at the chance. Yeah, I want ghost hunters in my house. But it was very cool of her. And I guess um, that house, you know, it was an investigation, but two of the most profound things happened to me during that time in her house. What's that? I'm talking to her and we're just talking about why I'm there. And then all of a sudden to her left, to my right, there's two balls of light, white like this, solid, this size, and they're vibrating. And my eyes just look to her side and she's like, what, what, what's going on? And I'm telling her what I see. And she's like, oh yeah, I've seen that before. But I was in shock because I've never seen anything like that with my own eyes. Yeah. And I just couldn't stop. And then all they were gone. <clears throat> and I'm like, that is super cool. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to leave. And she's talking to me saying, thank you for coming and whatnot. And I hear a man say, hey. And my eyes got like this big. And I'm like, I just heard the man say, hey. And she goes, oh, yeah. Lots of people hear him say that. And I'm just like freaked out going, oh, my God. Two of the greatest things have just happened to me. And I had no equipment to capture it. You know, that's the first thought in my head. Well, sure. But what's wonderful is he's testing to see if people can hear him. Yeah, I think so, for sure. I don't know what those two balls were. They were exactly the same size. Yeah. They were they were exactly the same. It was, I, I guess they're going to, I'm going to say they're orbs, you know, yeah. I love right. hate with orbs, but I don't know what else it could have been. Right. I mean, it was weird. <laughs> yeah so but what what i love is that they had the energy to show you something which is yeah. really a big deal this is one of the things that i love getting to talk about is that spirits as a human body we have our brain makes electricity and our heart does and that feeds everything we do we actually yeah. have neurological connections throughout our entire bodies through our nerve endings and actual neurons in our blood that transfer our ability to be happy and think and feel and exist. It's all based on electrical currency in our body. So when we don't have a body to create that energy, our life force gets drained very easily. And so any communication is exhausting. Yes. Any speech any manifestation any visual things that someone can create to show themselves wipes them out yeah and so what i usually suggest is when you're making communications with them or they're trying to show themselves give them a span of time to regenerate and give them some way to create more energy and one of the things that i share is that ghosts can get some energy through regular electrical currents um, they tend to like batteries better, and I don't know why, but I do know that they do get energy from lights. And oh. I I have found that the new LED lights that are lower in electricity, they create brighter lumens, but yeah. they're lower in wattage, tend right. to be easier for ghosts to deal with. They seem to okay. not mind them as much. There are ghosts, though, when they're talking, they don't like bright lights around them. They like candle lights because that's more soothing. But yeah. it's okay to leave a light or two on for them to get energy from. Oh, yeah. So for batteries sure. are preferred. I mean, like car batteries even. And and I've suggested to several investigators, bring a, you know, even a motorcycle battery and stick it in the middle of the room. Oh, and tell I? them, you, yes, tell them you can use this. This is for you to help you communicate if you want to if you know this is a gift for you if you would like to while i'm here use this battery that i've brought this is for you to use not to keep but to use right. while i'm here to help you communicate or show yourself if you would like or demonstrate something so that you can let us know that you're here we want to acknowledge you and support you and basically yeah. it's just something small i prefer the motorcycle batteries because they're not so heavy because i have oh, trouble yeah. with my shoulders and car oh, yeah. batteries are not light <laughs> yeah, I love one of those around. right but motorcycle batteries are by contrast a lot smaller or even remember those old flashlights that were a cube yes and the big the, squares the, those yeah. are kind of awesome yeah and yeah, exactly. and what's fun is if you have one on and you can see it getting drained then you know someone's using it yeah, yeah. That's another way to track it. 
for sure. And I think when you over investigate a place, you can just deplete them and you get less and less activity because they just don't have the energy because you've already taken it from them. Exactly. So they need time to recuperate. So one of one of the things that I think would be fun to find, but to be cautious of is somewhere in your town, there's got to be a few locations where ghosts go to recuperate and get away from people. Hmm. And it's there's not in, it's not in buildings. Typically it's usually away or it's in a very old building that's been abandoned a long time. Right. Ghosts tend to have junctions where they go to rest and also to travel. There's places that allow them to go between other locations quickly, kind of like an escalator or an elevator for ghosts. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And so those can be, to me, if you just want evidence, that would be a great place to go. But ghosts can direct you where to go. Yeah. And so I would be yeah. tempted to even put a map out of Astoria and ask them to move something small, like, like those little teeny... Uh, circles that they use for bingo, something oh, really yeah. light or yeah. a feather or something super, super light that they can push to show you where to go. Oh, I'm going to try that for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I mean, we have, you know, our downtown area is only, you know, a handful of blocks, but mm -hmm. it seems like there's a story at almost every business downtown. Oh, I'm and sure. We have the underground and people think it's tunnels like Portland, which it's not really right uh, it's just really basements but that's right. where we get a lot of activity is underground and right. i don't know if it's because it's inherently quieter down there and we're able to have more communication um but we've been in at least a dozen places downtown that we've gotten mm -hmm. communications underground right. so that's kind of a cool thing with astoria right that's something that yeah. I definitely wouldn't mind spending some more time down there. I, I like Astoria period just because it's beautiful. It's a great location and I love it. So tell me, is there anything that you're particularly proud of that you have done so far? Hmm. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to say proud, but, um, I think what I like most about what we do are the public investigations and our public appearances because it brings um, the paranormal to light mm -hmm. and it allows people, and I call them our freak peeps, to come out and enjoy the paranormal and not be judged. Right. Uh, because everybody at these events are there for the same reason. Right. And, um, especially the ghost conference, but I like mm -hmm. being able to explain to people what we do, how we do it, the things we use. And the, I also share with them evidence that we've captured really fabulous evidence because people are interested, even though they're not out there on the street corner saying, I want to know about the paranormal. Right. There's a lot of people that do. Yeah. And I have been met with that when I've gone to a location and said, hey, I want to do a public investigation here. Mm -hmm. And they look at me like I have seven heads. Like, what are you right. talking about? Do people <laughs> even care about that? Like, right. You watch. And yeah. one of our locations, we sold out within a matter of days. Yeah. And I said, oh, I'm sure. There's a lot of people interested in the paranormal. They just right. don't know how to go about it, where to go. Right. Uh, and who to talk to. So I think I'm proud that we have a, a group that does the public investigations in addition to our private. That's awesome. Yeah. And now in the paranormal field, what are you most curious about these days? What are you, what are you kind of into right now? Hmm. What are you focused on? Hmm. I, well, I'm always focused on trying to get video proof. Okay. So. I put a lot of cameras because I want something on camera. Mm -hmm. I've captured one apparition mm -hmm. on camera, a still camera. And I've captured a couple things on video. Uh, we just did a video. We had it trained on a pendulum in a bottle. Mm -hmm. And that, that pendulum was kind of moving just because of the uh, movement on the floor. It was mm -hmm. like a wooden floor. 
But all of a sudden, it starts vibrating. And it was the weirdest thing, and it didn't do it for very long, but it was noticeable, mm -hmm. and that went, look, it's vibrating. And then it went back to its normal, just a little bit of movement. And I thought, mm -hmm. why did it do that? That had to be something affecting it, because why? I, I just couldn't come up with a reasonable, rational explanation as to why it went from just slightly moving to this weird vibrating movement. Right. So that's what I concentrate on is, is capturing proof on video and audio. That's awesome. What brought you to do that, to put a pendulum in a bottle? Where did that come from? <laughs> well, I did see someone using a pendulum and even you think you're not moving, but just the very slightest movement in your hand, you're affecting that pendulum. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy for someone to barely move and have that pendulum go like this and say okay. it's spirit. Okay. And so um, I never liked using them. And then I went into a shop in town. It's a magic shop mm -hmm. that this guy does seances. Mm -hmm. And he put it in a bottle. And I, I think he got the idea somewhere else. But anyway, he had it in a bottle. And right. I'm like, I'm going to steal your idea. I told mm -hmm. him straight up. I go, I'm stealing. And so I did. Um, so now... We take these bottles, and I've never had anything happen on our particular cases, but I've right. seen it working on others. But that night, it worked. And so I'm going to take one every single time for sure, just to yeah. see and have a camera trained on it. Because things right. like that normally don't happen when you're looking at it. You know, right. it's usually stuff after you leave. But that's great. I love that. So there's no, there, there's no uh, man-made error in it. You know, right. unless, you know, something's moving the table that it's sitting on. So that's why I like having it in the bottle. Right. That's interesting. See, I'd almost be tempted to, because glass is an insulator, I would be tempted to come up with a device kind of, and I'm, what I'm imagining in my mind is something that looks like a swing set, but small. Oh, yeah. And just so that yeah. the pendulum can hang in the open air. Yeah. Oh, that's smart too. But, but that that know, way, because glass glass is an insulator for electricity. Well, that's just why. Spitballing. What if there's yeah. some sort of it moves? How can you say it wasn't the vent? Well, that's or, why you oh, have to yeah, vet it. That's why you have to put it somewhere and say there's no air vent, and it, it's it's yeah. just pre-scanning, yeah. right? And just say, look, this is where the air vents are in the room. Yeah. You know they're their air system is turned off because that's usually one of my first requests. All air systems are off when you're doing right. something because then that's not a conversation. Then there, that's not yep. a possibility that things are off so that you know. And if all the windows are shut, then you can't blame a draft coming in, blowing yeah. out a candle or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, now my mind is with the Tinker Toys. I'm going to go buy right. some Tinker Toys and make them now. <laughs> now yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There I you go. Perfect type thing. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Awesome. That would totally work. Yeah. But that way, you know, it's whatever's around it to get it to do things. Yeah. I think I'm going to try that now. After that I could be fun. <laughs> right. Right. People like well, them. So I make them and um, so people can, you know, get them at our investigations or whatnot. Because people like. They want to have some type of gear, but they're right. not necessarily going to go on Go Stop and spend hundreds of dollars, you know? Right. They'll, they'll start with a cat ball. Right. You know? Right. So that's always something that the junior investigator can do. Right. Cat balls are, are pretty good um, indicators of something because they don't light up unless they're touched or moved. Right. They're not EMF detectors. So right. something definitely has to affect it for it to go off. Exactly. But that's what's fun is that you can find really basic things just to start. Yeah, for you sure. just have to think outside the box. One of the yeah. fun, funnest ones that I will tell you that I love is just using salt. Okay. If you oh, bring regular good. table salt and dump it somewhere where there has been people stepping and walking or where you hear footsteps. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you get to see them. And when we get done with this investigation, this interview, I'm saying investigation too much. Um, I'll give you some other 
pointers from some other things okay. that I've learned over the years that you might find fun to do on your investigations. Oh, well, great. this is our, our time to, to close out for now, but we'll have to get back together and visit again, Signe. And, sure. and yeah. I would love to hear updates on what you're finding in Astoria. And for anyone that's interested in contacting you, um, I'm just going to put this on really quick. And if you would, please, for the people listening, can you please describe um, how people can reach you and spell it out for people that are just listening so they can contact you if they want to ask you a question? Oh, for sure. Uh, right now, we only have a Facebook page. So you can go to Ghostoria, G-H-O-S-T-O-R-I-A on Facebook to our business page. And that has our contact information. You can call us. You can message us. Uh, we're usually pretty good about getting back to you. Um, we also have a couple of public investigations coming up in Astoria that you can reach us at. Um, on the 12th, we're going to be at the Liberty Theater. Nice. It's our annual benefit for the Liberty. All proceeds nice. go to them. We have, uh, we're doing something new this year. We're doing a midnight tour. Nice. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Wow. And then we are returning to Gully's Butcher Shop. Uh, doing a special ghost story a tour on the 18th. Nice. You can find us there and talk to us about your haunted location. That sounds amazing. Absolutely. Well, I definitely want to say thank you for coming in today because I've been waiting to chat with you and I'll love okay. to get a hold of your partner and talk with her some more too and, and get her recorded. Um, I love what you guys are doing in Astoria and I am so excited that you're doing things the way you are. I just, yeah. I'm very, very happy for you and I'm happy for Astoria that you're the one taking care of the place right now <laughs> because it deserves respect and regard. And if you're doing things as you are, that just, I love that because that's just a good way to deal with the afterlife with some, with some respect and some honor and, yeah. and not necessarily if you get fame along the way, great, but I don't know that that's the right way to go. I just think proof is the way to go. Absolutely. Definitely. Just go for not proof. Fame and fortune. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening and watching. This is Holly and Signe saying goodbye for now. Thank you so much for checking in with me. And if you would guys, if, yeah, if you would please hit the like button and share on YouTube, that's a big help for me. I appreciate it. And tell your friends, if there's people that, you know, that you think might be interested in the paranormal, this is where we talk about it. Like it's normal everyday conversation. <laughs> this is Holly saying thank you again and we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to Holly's Pandorium. If you have stories to share, you can find me on hollyspandorium.com, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also listen on Spotify and our wonderful Metal Cross Radio at radioking.com. Thanks again for listening.